Okay, this is the uh, engine bay of a 1970 Chevelle SS style car. Uh, it does have a 454 big block in it, uh, or some configuration thereof. We don't know the actual displacement. It's hard to tell with so many stroker kits out today. But we're going to assume that it is a 454. There's no numbers on it, so we can't really check as to its origin. But um, uh, it's a big block Chevy, and it certainly has more than enough power to throw this thing down the road as fast as you want to go. Uh, it has a Edelbrock uh, aluminum uh, a Performer RPM intake manifold on it, a vacuum Holly uh, dual feed carburetor, 14-inch um, unsilenced air cleaner, a uh, set of, uh, I don't know if they're a Cal customer or whose they are, but they're a set of um, uh, thin aluminum valve pan covers, a real nice looking set of covers. Uh, it has power steering, it has power brakes, and Factory air conditioning, how about that? It definitely has factory air. All the original bracketry and everything still hooked up. It has what appears to be an aluminum water pump on it, brand spanking new, a new chrome alternator on it. Uh, let's see, uh, new belts. Uh, Donnie must have put new belts on it. He has his belt fetish. Um, it does have the air conditioning hooked up, obviously, but it also has the heat hooked up and a nice, neat feature there's a ball valve so that you can shut off the uh, water flow to the passenger compartment to keep that heat from uh, radiating into the passenger compartment. Um, high silicone plug wires. It has a uh, HEI uh, distributor on it, new cap. Um, has a high flow uh, big block radiator in it, big wide guy, the way these things came from the factory with the correct fan shroud and a seven blade clutch fan with a nice tight clutch on it yet. Um, has a billet aluminum overflow bottle that someone has installed in this. It has a newer battery with a shut off on it too, which is a nice feature to have. Uh, conventional suspension in this, no one's put double uh, A arms or anything in the front uh, suspension wise. It still has the conventional uh, GM suspension. The original washer bottle still intact and in place. Uh, dual horns in the front here. The radiator core support has never been disrupted in any way. Uh, nice clean looking condenser in front of the radiator for the air conditioning. Um, the grating on the uh, collar area, which is usually deteriorated or missing, all three sections <coughs> are on this vehicle in an excellent condition. The cowl tag is nice and legible and still in place the way it was uh, originally from GM. All new components on this air conditioning too, by the way. Uh, all the lines, everything associated with the air conditioning, the, uh, all the valving and everything is all, uh, all new. The uh, engine appears to have been out and everything refreshed in it. It's an iron head motor. It does not have aluminum heads on it, so it's probably a, uh, a pretty much stock 454 with a little bit of a cam in it and definitely a better intake and carb system than they offered. It does have a set of uh, long tube headers on it. Not sure of the actual diameter. They're going to be, I'm going to say inch and three quarters, maybe inch and seven eighths. I know they're not a two inch, um, but they're close to it. So uh, it make a nice system for the street, give you a nice lot of low end torque to it, a lot of mid range power. Uh, let's see. The uh, inner fender panels, uh, semi flat black, just the way they should be painted. The uh, uh, cowl area, everything is just as nice and fresh and clean as you could uh, uh, hope to find. Uh, padding, uh, sound deadener, insulation uh, installed in the hood, and uh, it does have a cowl induction style hood on it. Uh, not a functional cowl induction system, but it does have the cowl type hood on it, which was also available from GM. The um, motor is just a, a great looking big block Chevy uh, in an SS 1970 Chevelle. The, uh, the horsepower of this, I'm, I'm really not sure what it would be. It would be at least what an LS5 would be. So uh, you're in the uh, upper threes, probably with the intake and carbon, everything associated in the headers. Uh, I'm going to guess the, the, the car's making somewhere four and a quarter, 450. Uh, certainly getting close to the performance uh, of a uh, uh, LS6 with this particular uh, setup the way it is. Again, I'm no dyno, so it's hard to do, you know, just looking at it. It's just, you know, extrapolating what could possibly be there with this type of a setup. The uh, uh, engine compartment is as fresh and clean as you will ever find on any car uh, in one of the most iconic cars that you could ever buy, 1970 Chevelle. So we're going to go around the rest of it and see what we can find. Hi, you're at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida, and today we have 
1970 Chevelle, which we dearly needed. Every time we get one, it seems that we sell it, and then we're short one. So we have one in a convertible right now, and then we have this one in a, uh, a coupe. So we're going to go over it and show you everything we can, try to pick out any deficiencies that there are in the car. <laughs> This is not a driver quality paint. It, it is absolutely a show quality car. You can see the stripes, you can't feel them, but they are there. Uh, fitment of the hood, you can see eighth of an inch the whole way up. I mean, it, it just, the fitment is absolutely gorgeous around the front uh, header piece on it. Down this side, the same way. Absolute precise fitment of the hood to the fender. And again, the paint on this thing is just absolutely a foot deep. It, it's, uh, as beautiful a paint job as you could ever, ever hope to find on any vehicle. The um, headlight basils, uh, no patina whatsoever on the chrome area on them, either side. Yep, perfect. Uh, grill, the trim around the grill itself. No stone chips or marks whatsoever in the anodized aluminum around the grill, Chevrolet designation. Plastic, all the uh, slats in it are just as nice as can be. SS designation on the front because that's what it is. Uh, front bumper. Somebody spent some time on this guy. It fits absolutely precise. No dinghies or marks on the front of it. Uh, parking lights, nice and clean and clear. Amber, just the way they should be. Uh, no marks on that front bumper at all from any trauma through the years. The bumper fitment, again, is just as straight and clean and nice as you'd ever hope to find, both vertically and uh, horizontally. It can't fit any better than it does. So the front end of this car is exemplary. There's not a, uh, a single uh, uh, panel or a piece out of place. There's no defects in the chrome. There's no marks on the top of it uh, from anyone putting their feet up on it through the years. Um, the paint is just that deep in it. It just it, it looks like you can dive into it. It looks like it, it's wet all the time. Front end of this car is flawless. It's as nice as anything that you could ever hope to find. Let's go down the side and see if we can show you something there. Okay, driver's side of our SS uh, Chevelle. Again, the paint on this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Fitment of the uh, front marker light, flawless. Fender lip molding. No marks, dinghies, nothing whatsoever. Absolutely no imperfections, no marks. SS uh, 454 designation on the side, because that's what it is. Look at the fitment of this. The hood to the front fender to the door. The door is beautiful fitment. It can't fit any better than it does. It absolutely cannot. The trim that goes across the uh, back part of the hood, the top of the fenders, lines up as nice as I've ever seen on any Chevelle. It's very difficult to get these things that are actually even in place, and this one is lined up just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. Trim around the front window. No marks, scuffs, chips on it whatsoever. Nothing, no dinghies from uh, stones being thrown up through the years. Correct wiper arms and blades. They're tucked down under the uh, collar area here. You can't really see them, but they are the correct wiper arms and blades that. Uh, uh, would have been released with this vehicle. Sunshade, fade, window in the front, tinted glass. The uh, Looking down at the uh, dashboard, there are no cracks, no uh, warpage, uh, no imperfections whatsoever in the padded dash. And where it transitions to the base of the windshield, flawless. There's no dirt whatsoever. The uh, VIN tag is nice and legible and clean, not rusty or anything. The uh, base of this windshield to the dashboard is as fine as you could ever hope to find. It looks like it was new in 1970. Correct style, non-adjustable mirror on the uh, driver's door. The roof is just wet glass. It's as nice as, and straight and flawless as you could ever hope to find. Whoever laid the paint on this car did an exemplary job. Uh, drip rail, no marks, no dinghies, no imperfections whatsoever. Wipes, whiskers, and the rubber where it transitions onto the top of the quarter panel and the door. You can't even get your fingernail underneath it. Precise fitment. Precise. Those are new also, by the way. Nice resilient rubber on them. Get a glass in the side. And look at the door where it goes onto the quarter, quarter glass. Just as precise a fitment as you could hope to ever have. And no patina on this piece of chrome on the, uh, 
rear quarter glass window either. Door handle, uh, the chrome is absolutely flawless, brand new. Look, totally amazing. And the paint on this thing is, Jesus. Wow, somebody really spent a lot of time on this car. Sail panel, no imperfections. Trim around the uh, rear light, which is also tinted. Uh, no marks whatsoever. The, the hat shelf, rack, tray, uh, absolute beautiful. There's no uh, marks whatsoever in it. There's no fade. There's no uh, scuffs or anything on it. It has two aftermarket speakers in the enclosures uh, in the back, so it, it must have some type of a nice sound system in it, I'm guessing. No trim around, or the trim around this uh, wheel well, the same as the other one. Nice sharp edges. No one's made any attempt to cut into these quarter panels uh, for tire or wheel clearance. Same thing on the bottom here. So all tin. Uh, paint on this quarter panel, the same as the rest of it. Just absolutely gorgeous. Side marker lamp in the back. You look down the side of this car, there are absolutely no imperfections. It's, it's just a straight and nice and, and well executed a, a, a restoration as you could ever, ever hope to find. The uh, wheels and tires, they chose to go with a little more modern wheel and tire combination on this vehicle. It has disc brakes in the front, drums in the back, 18 inch in the front, 20 inch in the back. And if you notice, they're a torque thrust style wheel. So the style of wheel is correct for that era of car. And these particular ones are chrome plate. It's certainly a lot wider, a lot larger tire than ever came on this vehicle. And about as much as you can hang on this thing, really, from the looks of it. But it's a nice combination, a modern uh, style uh, set of wheels and tires for a uh, vintage type uh, 70 Chevelle SS. It has a nice look to it, especially with the torque thrust style wheels on it. Normally, I don't like chrome wheels or bigger wheels or anything, but this car has a lot of look with those particular wheels and tires on it. And since they are a torque thrust design, they do kind of meet what would the era correct uh, wheel would be for a car like this. Let's go out back, see for something there. Okay, rear section of our 70 SS car. And again, look at this. Eighth of an inch the whole way. There's not. I don't have to adjust the wood, I don't have to adjust the door, and I don't have to adjust the deck lid. So one more door and I'm home free. I don't have, I go drink some tea. I don't have to worry about adjusting anything on this car. The paint again on the front of this and the back of it and the sides, but so far I haven't found a single mark or a chip or an imperfection in the finish. And everything appears to be a foot deep. It's as nice a paint job as you'll ever find on any car. Bumper fitment in the back. <laughs> Same as it was on the front. Absolute precise. Uh, Argent trim around the tail lights, which are nice and clean and clear. That side, this side the same way. Backup lights uh, are clear also. The rubber bumper piece that goes across the back, insert wise, with the white trim around it and the SS designation, just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. The uh, rear of the Lance has no pulls on it whatsoever. The bumper fitment to it is absolute precise. Uh, again, the correct uh, style exhaust tips going out the back for a 1970 SS car. This thing is about as precise a car so far as I've seen. It's really nice. It looks as good as our Dodge Dart. It's fantastic, fantastic car. One more passenger side, our last side, and I'm telling you, I have not found an imperfection yet. Not one. Uh, side marker light, nice and tight and uh, precise fitment. Nice sharp edges. Again, fender well, no one's modified it in any way. All tin, trim around the back light. I have a feeling I'm wasting my time going around this thing. I'm showing it to you, but I haven't found one. I'm really looking to find any imperfection. I can't find anything. Cell panel, roof. Again, the fitment of the window to the rear quarter glass, tinted, molding along the bottom, your wife's whiskers, can't get a figure now underneath it, and it has a right hand mirror, so that means I can take this and drive it. Chrome on the handle, look at this, 
totally unbelievable. That someone, this had to be someone's life's work to put this car into this degree of uh, restoration. To make these panels fit. Look, normally on a 70 Cheval, they don't fit like this. They just don't. And uh, this one is as precise as I've ever seen on any 70. There's usually an issue with the, the fitment of the door to the fender. This one has not. It's precise. SS 454. Look. Unreal. Holding. Marker light. We're back where we started again. Uh, I wish you could see the quality of the paint that's on this vehicle. Uh, it, it's just incomparable that someone can make a vehicle to this degree. Uh, I always say that it, it's difficult. You can't compare these cars to a new 911 Porsche or a 488 uh, Ferrari, but uh, the paint and the fit and the finish on this car really approaches that type of uh, a quality. Someone has really put a lot of effort and time and money into bringing this car to this degree. I remember I told Kevin we could use another Chevelle hardtop. Well, when he sent this one down, it was like, I have no idea where it came from. All I know is I'm really glad we got the car. It's a phenomenal car. Uh, it has a lot of amenities to it. It has tinted glass. It has air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, and a right-hand mirror. So your little buddy can drive it and feel good about it. Torque thrust style. 18-inch uh, in the front, 20-inch in the rear, modern tires, but they have that retro look to them because of the torque thrust design of the wheel on it. Uh, the chrome, it, you know, you either like it or you don't like it, but it, it, it really accentuates this car. It really actually looks good with this body style and the, uh, the uh, orange paint and the white stripes. And it has a tan interior in it, which we're going to show you here in a second. It has a nice contrast to it, you know, with that tan and orange. Uh, one of uh, Corvette favorite paint is uh, Ontario orange with a tan interior and this car is kind of similar to that not exactly but very very close uh, this car is available at Hangsters in Daytona Beach Florida and uh, as like every vehicle that we present to you we always encourage everyone to come down in person so we can meet you we can show you the car we can go for a ride put it up on the rack talk about the vehicle show you all the the pluses on this vehicle and so far I haven't found one negative I went over this entire vehicle you just watched me do it I couldn't find a chip a mark a panel that was out of place anything that I could pick on absolutely nothing uh, this car is as nice a uh, Chevelle as you will ever find anywhere uh, and again we try to get everybody to come down but if you can't that's why we're doing these videos for you and trying to pick out every little imperfection that we can to show you uh, what the car has as far as uh, whenever you get the car we don't want you to say well you didn't tell me there was a stone chip here or this door didn't close the way it's supposed to and there's an overhang we're trying to show you everything as we have it in front of us right now um, uh, a lot of times we'll show you something the wipers don't work the the door doesn't close it needs adjusted or something those are things that we take care of prior to shipment of the vehicle to you so whenever you get the vehicle you'll know that that car is as good as we can possibly make it both mechanically and aesthetically take a look at the pictures Devin's going to have about a hundred of them on the website for you to look at and we just did the video we're going to present the rest of it the undercarriage inter interior and everything else for you and you'll have everything that you need to help you in the purchase of this vehicle from Hanksters. okay this is the interior of our uh, orange and tan tan on the inside uh, 70 SS Chevelle Headliner, tight as a drum, sun visors, no stitching coming loose, nice resilient, uh, the original type sun visors that came on this car. Rear view mirror, no milkiness whatsoever, and it's a day-night mirror. It is the correct mirror for the car. Remember we talked about the uh, dashboard on the outside looking down on it. We're looking across it and across the front of it now, the face of it. Uh, absolutely no imperfections, no uh, cracks, no uh, imperfections or, or warpage or anything whatsoever. <clears throat> uh, wood grain steering wheel with the tri spokes with the cuts in them um, Chevy uh, horn on it that works uh, look at this tilt wheel that's a nice option to have in any car uh, tachometer speedometer clock uh, oil pressure is down here it does have uh, three gauges in the dash that uh, were the gauge package they didn't offer an oil pressure gauge with the gauge package so it has amp temp and uh, fuel uh, but it does have three gauges underneath it has uh, actual temperature water temperature 
uh, oil pressure uh, and amp gauge for you. Uh, original equipment style radio, I don't know if it's the actual uh, original one, but it is an AM FM radio and it is the, the correct style. Has the uh, correct vents for this car in the dashboard the way it would have been in 1970. And you can see everything is uh, correct underneath the hood for a factory installed air conditioning. All your knobs are nice and clean and, and fresh looking. Uh, your face to the uh, selector for the air conditioning, heat, vent, everything is just as precise as you'd ever hope to find. Glove compartment in the dashboard. Glove compartment on the console. Uh, the chrome on the console is just as clean and fresh as can be, and so is the brushed uh, area in front of it around the uh, gear selector. Staple shifter the way it should be from the factory. SS de designation on the door panels, and they're just as fresh and clean. Molded armrest uh, the way they sh should be from the factory. Uh, no foot marks or shoe marks or anything on either one of the doors. The uh, cranks are the original window cranks for this car. You can see how the... Um, Plastic turns yellow. Same thing in the back. Same thing in the back. So they're all original. Generally, whenever you see new ones, they're going to be a nice, clear, bright pl plastic or black, one of the two. As they age, the more they age, the, the more they take on an amber tone, and that's what you have for these four. So I'm going to say that they are the original ones. Uh, loop pile carpeting in the car, just the way it uh, would be from General Motors. It has. Um, uh, Speakers in the uh, kick panels. Uh, there is a special enclosure made into the kick panel uh, so that they would incorporate speakers. So you got two in the front, you got two in the back, and an AM/FM in the front here. So uh, must have a pretty good sound system in it. It has the uh, dome light still functional. Also, the um, uh, light for the passenger in the rear is uh, on the back of the console, and it's uh, uh, functional also. It has seat belts in the front, still clipped onto. Uh, they're um, fixtures on the side of the console. I don't see seat belts in the back. That doesn't mean they're not there. Uh, we just concern ourselves with seat belts being in the front. It has a set of aftermarket rubber mats in it, uh, front and back. So uh, the original carpeting obviously is underneath them. Bucket seats in the front with the correct style basket weave inserts in them, the correct style seating area. The same thing for the back. The uh, armrests in the back have. Uh, trash trays in them. There's also a trash tray. Where is it? Right here. There's a trash tray in the front. Uh, the tops of the uh, side panels in the back usually have a little bit of um, um, sunshade fade type of um, uh, deterioration on the top of them. These have absolutely none. They're just as clean and clear as the day they were uh, uh, put on. The, the interior of this car, the fitment around the um, the top, you know, everything that the, the, the side pieces along your eight pillars here, everything on this vehicle was as fresh and clean as it would have been from the factory in 1970. Nice, clean, nice, soft, resilient rubbers and seals on this car, weather stripping. When you look inside the doors, it's just as clean as it was in 1970. There's no uh, deterioration, there's no overspray, no mess whatsoever inside the door panels of this car, inside the uh, hinge area. This vehicle, interior-wise, is as nice a vehicle as you'll ever find anywhere, and it mimics the outside of this. We didn't find an imperfection on the outside of this vehicle. Now we're doing the same thing on the inside here. We didn't find one thing that's out of place or a fitment issue or something that shows even a minuscule amount of wear. So we have an undercarriage to do yet in the drive, and then you got it all. Hangsters here in Daytona. All right, we just lit up our uh, 70 Chevelle orange outstanding car. Horn. Horn definitely works. The, uh, let's see here. The remote mirror. Check this out. Huh? Somebody put a tilt column in this puppy. It's got tilt steering in it. Tachometer working as it should. Okay, let's do turn signal. Let's turn signal left. Turn signal right. Speedometer, which I know is going to work. I just read through the parking lot and it was functioning then. Uh, gauges, uh, these probably, this probably won't function, uh, the amp or the uh, uh, temp, because they are hooked up as auxiliary gauges underneath. But the fuel pressure, fuel pressure, fuel gauge is showing that it has between a quarter and a half and that it is functioning. So uh, let's see, air conditioning. The air kicks on. And starting to blow cold. How about that? 
we got air conditioning that actually works, which is a good thing here in Florida. Uh, let's see here, radio. Let's do radio. Devin, how do you turn this thing on? Is it on? It's on. Okay, we got a radio that works. We have gauges now that are functioning. You see we have oil pressure uh, charging at uh, 13, 8, uh, 14 volts the way it's supposed to. Water temperature starting to come up and we have uh, about, what, 60, a little over 60 pounds of oil pressure. Wipers. Wipers functioning as they should. How about that? So apparently everything in this car works. I don't see anything that isn't. The clock's not working, but this is not going to work. Um, nice car, really nice car. Let's go for a ride, see how it runs. Holy crap, this thing's really a nice car. Look at this. Going down the road, no hands. I mean, absolutely no hands on the wheel. Straight as an arrow. Let's try uh, brakes, no hands, see what happens. Stop just as nice and straight as can be. Nice firm shifts, nice crisp firm shifts on it. Doesn't hammer it into gear, but it uh, has a nice solid firm shift to it. A little bit of a shift kit in it. Real precise steering. Somebody, uh, whenever they bought this new steering box, had to buy a, a high resolution steering box because look at this. You move the uh, steering wheel an inch and it's going wherever you point it. it very good steering system in this thing. No shakes, shimmies, rattle, squeaks, nada, nada. Has a great exhaust sound. And the Flowmasters make it sound really nice. It has a nice, uh, nice, not real raspy, but a nice deep throaty tone to it. But uh, we'll turn it around here and give it a little uh, squirt and see what it uh, runs like. I got to be careful not to get caught here again, but uh, we'll give it a little shot for you. I got to get a little bit ahead here and give it a little bit of... Car pulls just like it should, shifts nice and crisp. It's a nice running uh, big block Chevy. It has a great sound to it and it just is tight. I can't believe how tight and straight this car is. I mean, it, it, it just... Aimed it the wrong direction there, though. There we go. The car just as nice and tight and straight a car as you could ever hope to find. We're still driving down the road with no uh, no hands on the wheel, and we're starting to go off the right a little bit there. Nice car. This thing, uh, speedometer, by the way, is working as it should. Also, it's a little bit slow. I don't. Uh, it's showing we're going 35 mile an hour. We're certainly going more than that. So it's incorrect, but it's working. So. Great sound though, I mean, this, this car just got a great, great sound to it. Nice running car. Somebody's going to have a lot of fun with this guy. Very tight, I can't believe how tight and uh, precise everything is on this vehicle. Very precise. Everything works as it should. Steers as it should, uh, brakes, uh, just everything. I mean, just everything on this car is high end. This is the uh, underside of an absolutely outstanding 1970 Chevelle, orange with white stripes on it. Uh, car's new. I'm going back and drink my tea. Uh, this thing is absolutely phenomenal. Um, F41 heavy duty sway bar in the front, new bushings, new uh, sway bar ends, uh, new uh, ball joints, uh, new tie rod ends, new steering arm, new steering box, new pitman arm. New idler arm, uh, new tranny, uh, transmission cooling lines, uh, new shocks, new springs, new rotors, new calipers, new associated hardware. Uh, the engine you can see has been out and completely refreshed. Everything is painted nice and chevy orange, just the way it should be. Also, notice there's no leaks whatsoever on the engine, the bell housing area, or the transmission itself. 
or the tail shaft or the uh, speedometer gear. At this point, two years from now, it's definitely going to be leaking, but it isn't leaking right now. Um, ceramic coated, uh, uh, long tube headers on it. I'm going to call them inch and three quarters. They might be inch and seven eighths. I'm going to call them inch and three quarters. They go to uh, a set of three inch uh, collectors that go into two and a half inch primary pipes with an H pipe crossover on it. Uh, let's see here. Jeez. <clears throat> Um, I'll jump around a little bit here. Uh, the fender wells where they transition down aren't messed up at all. They're just as nice and fresh and clean as can be. The box channel section of the frame from the front to the back, which by the way, the front is totally undisrupted. This car's never been punched in the nose at all. Cradle underneath doesn't have any marks on it from uh, being jacked up. A little tiny cut here from scraping something. Uh, but no, no dents whatsoever. All new uh, throttle cable and linkage. Uh, oil has been uh, changed and uh, a new filter put on it. Um, floor pans uh, are the original floor pans. They still have the original uh, sound deadener type undercoating material that uh, GM and all the manufacturers kind of splattered on at that point in time. It wasn't a uh, undercoating. It was actually a sound deadener material to help isolate some of the road boys from the uh, passenger compartment. The um, box frames where they go into the seat channel sections <clears throat> to transition back onto another set of box frames in the rear. And that seat channel is just as nice and clean and, and rust free and deterioration free as you could ever hope to find. A couple of jack marks there. There's a jack mark there, a little curvature from a jack being uh, uh, used to lift this thing up through the years uh, there also. The uh, fuel lines are the correct fuel lines that. Uh, uh, came with this car and the uh, brake cables also, the uh, cables, brake lines also are the uh, uh, correct ones that came with the car from the factory. And again, like I said, the fuel line is the correct fuel line. The original parking brake is still hooked up and functional. It's still uh, functioning as it, it was meant to from the factory. The um, new joint on the front of the drive shaft is new. Transmission appears to have been out also with the entire drive line and everything freshened up in it. Uh, rear U joint is also uh, new in this vehicle. The um, floor pans in the back and all their uh, substructures just as fresh and clean as it was in 1970. It, it still retains all its originality. No one's messed with these things through the years and luckily no one's jacked them up through the years also. Uh, all your structural bracing that goes across the uh, uh, floor pan itself is still evident and still just as nice and clean as it was in 1970. There's absolutely no deterioration or rust or any issues whatsoever under this thing. Absolutely none. Where the uh, seat channel goes back to a box channel frame in the back here again, uh, there's, there's no marks at all on it. There's no jack marks whatsoever. A little tiny bit of a pull here from whenever it was being shipped and transported. Someone tightened the cable down a little bit too tight on it. Flowmaster mufflers, two and a half in, and I'm going to call them two and an eighth out. Um, it's actually two and a half in, two and a half out, but they necked it down from two and a half down to two and an eighth, uh, apparently. Um, rear end apparently has been a part and uh, put back together again, too. New seal in the front, uh, new uh, uh, yoke also, uh, draw shaft uh, end on it. Uh, springs in the back appear to have been uh, replaced at some point. A set of air shocks in the back. Box swing arms in the back, which is the indicative of an F41 suspension also, as is the uh, sway bar in the back. It's definitely an F41 car. The uh, brakes are fin drums in the back. Um, of course, this up front. And the, um, let's see, uh, all the bushings are new in this vehicle. Everything has been addressed and, and replaced. All new bushings. And again, the boxed uh, swing arms. Uh, the bushings at the top have also been replaced. The gas tank is the original gas tank. Still has a splatter undercoating on it. New, uh, new rubber lines added to the original uh, steel fuel lines that go forward. So it does have a, a new rubber line that goes to the uh, uh, tank for the uh, uh, float sensor pickup. The, uh, box channel where it transitions up over the uh, rear differential, which by the way is a 12 volt Chevy also. It's a heavy duty 12 volt. Uh, you've got a nice SS uh, original undercarriage on this vehicle, you know, box swing arms, 
uh, F41 suspension, heavy duty F41 sway bar in the front, everything is uh, 12 volt rear, uh, all SS heavy duty equipment. The C channel sections in the back, uh, where they transition back to the uh, rear of the vehicle, there's a section that goes across that's not pulled or bent or distorted in any way. All your body mounts are nice and fresh looking and new. The uh, pipes where they go out the back are the correct style uh, for 1970 exhaust tips that the SS uh, Chevelles had at that point in time. Drop downs in the quarters are originals, still have their original drain holes in them uh, on both sides. You can see the uh, uh, pinch wells on the uh, vehicle just the way they were put together at the factory when it was new. So apparently this thing is an original car underneath. I mean, from what I can tell, it's never been uh, disrupted in any way. It's just a totally rust-free 1970 Chevelle SS F41 suspension uh, vehicle. And again, 12-volt Chevy rear in it. Uh, everything on this vehicle is as nice as you're ever going to find one. And it has a lot of originality, too. You know, the thing hasn't been taken and stripped off underneath. It's not a rotisserie car. Didn't need to be. This car has originality under it. Phenomenal paint job on the uh, vehicle up top. Uh, you can see there's a, it's a fresh engine, uh, ceramic coated headers. Still don't even have any discoloration to them. Um, from a uh, flywheel cover, which I don't know if that adds anything or not. The, uh, the car is just a phenomenal car in every aspect. Uh, the undercarriage uh, depicts the, the quality of this vehicle and its integrity from when it was new. Uh, it's a car that uh, you're going to have a very, very difficult find time finding a duplication of. Uh, it's available here at Hanksters in Daytona Beach. And if you're in the market for a 70 Chevelle, uh, we got a couple of knockouts for you. we got this one as a coupe, and there's also a convertible in a four-speed car with air. It'll knock your socks off. Uh, but this being a coupe is the only one that we have right now uh, that we're going to video and put up. We do have another one that's going to be a less uh, costly vehicle. Uh, we haven't processed it yet. We don't know what we have in it yet. But this thing is an absolute diamond. Uh, Hangsters, Daytona Beach by Chevelle.